In my previous video, I mentioned that you would need to enter the details of your BIR Form 2307 into SAWT, or the Summary of Alpha List of Withholding Tax at Source, to ensure that your withholding tax amount would be properly accepted as tax credits when you file your income tax returns. And in this video, I will share with you the step-by-step -step process on how to create this entry using the Alpha List Data Entry and Validation Module app. Before we begin, make sure that you have all the BIR forms that you would need to enter, as well as your Certificate of Registration because you will need to enter your taxpayer information if this is your first time using this app. And in case you haven't downloaded the Alpha List Data Entry and Validation Module app, just click the card or the link in the description to check out the tutorial which I created for it. And if you have these items ready, we can now begin with the tutorial. The very first thing that you have to do is to open the Alpha List Data Entry app. You will be prompted to enter your username and password in order to log in. If it's your first time using this app, just enter your desired username and password and you should be good. But make sure to remember the username and password that you used because those are the same details that you would need to enter the next time you use this app. Once you log in for the first time, you will be prompted to enter your company taxpayer information in order to access the forms menu. This only means that you have to enter your own details into the app's database. So let's do that first. Click Yes. The Withholding Agent Information screen will appear. When completing the Withholding Agent Information, you have to make sure that you have your Certificate of Registration with you because you have to copy the details exactly from your COR. So in this example, I'll just type in some random information just to show you how it's done. The first thing that you have to click is the RDO code. Let's just select the first one. And then next is you put your nine digit TIN. And then here, choose a category of withholding agent, either private or government. So let's just say private. Next is line of business or occupation. So again, this piece of information can be found on your certificate of registration. But in this example, let's just pick any other industry. Let's say online selling. Now, I'm not sure if this is even valid, but let's just use that for now. Next is taxpayer classification. You choose either individual or non-individual. Let's select non-individual first. So when you select non-individual, you would see that the cursor would go straight to registered name because in here, it will ask you to enter a company name. But if you select individual, the cursor will automatically go to taxpayer name. It will expect you to put last name, first name, and middle name. So let's just put here some example information. And then your telephone number. And then next is your registered business address. So again, just copy exactly what is indicated on in your COR. Okay, so again, I just used some random details just to show you how it's done. And once you're done, just click save and then close. Now, we're ready to enter the details in SAWT. The first step is to click SAWT. Click the SAWT form dropdown to choose the BIR form you're entering your BIR form 23074. So let's say for this exercise, I am entering my BIR form for the fourth quarter of the year, 
which means that I am filing the tax credits for my ITR or BIR form 1701. So let's select 1701 from the drop down here. And then for the month of fields, just type in the month and year of the specific BIR form 2307 you're entering. So in this example, I'm entering my BIR form 2307 for the month of December 2021. 12, 2021. And then just complete this portion accordingly. So let's say if it's not an amended return, just leave it as N. Number of sheets attached. If there's none, just leave it as zero. Any taxes withheld, I'll choose yes here. Are there pays availing of tax relief under special law or international tax treaty? I leave it as in. And then once you're done with that, click on add update. A reminder message will pop up just to remind you about the entry you're working on. So it says you're working for the attachment of 1701 for the month of December 2021, which is correct. So if you don't see any issue, just click on OK. The data entry page will appear. In this portion, you will need to enter the details coming from the specific BIR form 2307 that you're entering. So for this exercise, let's just say I'm entering the details for my BIR form 2307 for December 2021. But before you can do anything, you have to click the Add button first so you can start entering details. So let's click Add. And you would notice that the cursor would automatically go to Taxpayer Identification Number. In this field, as well as in the Registered Name fields, you must enter the details of the payor. In short, these are the details pertaining to the company who issued the BIR Form 2307 to you. So let's just put here some random numbers as thin. And then let's just call the company as Company XYZ. Next is the alphanumeric tax code. So for this field, you have to select the ATC code that is indicated on your BIR form 2307, and you can find it under part three of the form. Now, you have to be very careful here because this code dictates the tax rate that will reflect in your entry. So let's just select an example here. Let's say this is for a commission. So just an example, I selected ATC code WC140. You will see that the tax rate automatically updated to 15%. So when you put your amount of income payment here, let's say you received 5,000 as an income. So once you've entered the amount, you would notice that the amount of tax withheld field would get automatically updated as well. So it says 750. Double check if the amount is the same with what you have in the BIR form 2307. So let's just say that everything is correct and you're good to go. Just click save. In case you're going to create another entry for another BIR form 2307, just click add button again and do the same steps. Otherwise, you can click Exit. Just click Yes here to confirm. Once you're back to the SAWT menu, you will need to generate a .dot file so you can validate your entry. This .dot file is also needed to be submitted to BIR. I will show you the steps later. But to generate a .dot file, just click the Generate File button which is right here. You will be asked to save the dot file. What I do is I create my separate folders where I save my dot files with corresponding month and year, so it would be easier for me to track them. Once you're done saving, you can view the dot file that you generated by clicking yes here. And then a notepad with certain script will appear. You don't have to do anything here, so you can just click X. 
and then a pop-up message will say that the file has been successfully created. Click OK. Once you're done, click back to main menu and then click exit to close the app. Now, it's time to validate the entry that we just created. We can do this by using the AlphaList Validation Module app. So open the AlphaList Validation Module app. On the main menu, your TIN would be automatically populated based on the details that you entered in the Withholding Agent Information section earlier. You will see it right here. Then, key in the appropriate tax year for the BIR form that you wish to validate. So in our example earlier, we are validating the BIR form 2307 for December 2021. Therefore, the tax year should be 2021. So I'll edit this one. And then, click SAWT. On the SAWT form dropdown, Choose the same BIR form you're filing this BIR form 2307 for. Again, in this example, this is for the tax credits for the BIR form 1701 or income tax return. So I'll select 1701 here. And then click Browse. So you have to choose the dot file that we created earlier. Just right here. And then you have to type in the corresponding month in the month field. So that's for December. So I'll put here 12. And the year is correct, 2021. And then click Validate File. The select directory will pop up. You just have to click Select. A notepad with validation results script will pop up. And you should see no errors encountered which indicates that the validation was successful. This one should say no errors encountered. So this one is good. So once you've seen that, you can close the notepad. The validation window will also say validation successful. You can also close this window. We're done with the validation, so we can click back to main menu. And then from here, just select exit. The next step is to submit the validated dot file to BIR. This is done via email. I already created a template to make it easier for me when doing so, since I include almost the same details each time. I just changed the specifics. So here's a template that I created. It has the email address of BIR where I send it to. It has the subject line, the TIN, name of taxpayer, registered address, form, and quarter filing. So in this template, I only changed the subject line, the form type, and the quarter filing because the TIN, the name of taxpayer, and registered address should remain the same. So for this example, we're submitting the BIR form 2307 for December 2021, and that's for 1701. So I have here in the subject line 1701 fourth quarter of year 2021. And then the form type here should also indicate 1701. And then finally, the quarter filing should also say fourth quarter of year 2021, which is consistent with what we have in the subject line. Feel free to copy the template if you want to. So let's say here's the email that you're about to send. So in the to field, you put here the BIR email address. And then the subject line indicates the form type that you're submitting as well as the quarter filing. You have the TIN, you have the name of taxpayer, registered address, the form type, and the quarter filing. And then of course, you have to attach the dot file that you validated earlier, which is right here. Once you're ready, just click send. But of course, I'm not gonna click send here because this is just an example. But once you click send, BIR will also send a response confirming the receipt and the validation. Here's a sample email response from BIR. And that's the end of this tutorial. 
you're now ready to file your BIR form with the corresponding tax credits. If you have any tax queries and concerns, you may call the BIR Customer Assistance Division at hotline number 8538-3200 or you may also send them an email at contact underscore us at bir.gov.ph. Thank you so much again for watching and I hope that you find this video helpful.